This is definitely 100% our newest candidate for the biggest hard off that I've ever been in. This place is massive and I'm, I'm seriously just, it's taking time to get to the game. That Yo, what's up everyone? Welcome to today's video. We are back in Churinkan. I figured this is a place where I've been before and the rule of thumb is usually one season between visits. So last time I was here was dead summer. Now it's super wintry and let's see if their stock changed and what we can find. This is a super nice quiet area. That means they have this big old shopping center over here. And it also means that this is kind of the melting pot where everyone gets to sell their secondhand stuff. So I, I've never had a bad run at this hard off. It's the Churinkan one, I'll put it in the description of course. And uh, yeah, let's see what we can find. So today we're going to be visiting the beautiful Churinkan. And Churinkan station seems a bit far, but it's actually pretty simple to get there. Since we're coming from the heart of Tokyo and Churinkan is actually in Kanagawa, we're going to be leaving Ebisu station for Shibuya station on the Yamanote line. It's the green line and it's the one that goes in a circle through the heart of Tokyo. It's really hard to miss. At Shibuya station, we're going to be transferring to the Den and Toshi line. Now this is a different line, so make sure you check out of the gates and find the subway. This is going to be all the way underground. Now make sure it's the express one and take it all the way down to Chuo Rinkan station. Google Maps should also just automatically guide you there. And this is really easy because Chuo Rinkan is the final destination of this train. Now I know this looks like a very, very long route to go to, and I guess geographically it is, but the whole trip from my front door to the station really just took about an hour, and it really goes to show how far you can get with Japan's really, really cool train system. So from experience, there's not a lot of smaller thrift stores in this area. I'm sure there's some, but I've never had a lot of success with them. So I've decided to go to two hard offs. One is at the Chuo Rinkan Mall and one is the Tsukimono hard off, which is a brand new hard off that I've never been to. It looked really, really big on Google Maps. The pictures look very promising and I'm very excited. All right, let's get hunting. And there it is. I, I knew this place wouldn't disappoint. Look at their stuff. They've got N64 over here, Super Famicom over here, Game Boy, Game Boy Advance over here. It's just all there. They've got the cart only. They've got the inbox games at the bottom. It's it's so well laid out. And uh, I'm gonna start at the N64 section, of course. And yeah, here we go. We've got Wave Race 64, the Rumble Edition. I'm definitely looking at this because I, I have Wave Race 64, but I don't have the Rumble Edition. So we're gonna put that in the maybe pile for 330. And then they've got Gamari Goemon for 1,100 without the manual. And um, I'm thinking about it. This is definitely one of the cheapest that I've found this game for 1,000 yen. So it's definitely also going to go in the maybe pile. Let's go. What else we found? We've got Disney's Tetris. This is apparently a really good version of Tetris. 2200, I'm gonna put this back for now, but it, it's definitely one of my uh, top games that I'm looking for at the moment. Then they've got this fishing game. This is apparently not a terrible fishing game. I'm not a big fan of fishing games in general, but this one seems to be okay. It seems to be up there. Then for 880, we've got Harvest Moon 64. I think I'm gonna pick this one up as well. It's got the missing manual, but for 880, I think this is definitely a uh, valuable addition to our collection. And look at their PlayStation section. It really looks like they have quite a high quality selection of games. Let's go through some of them. What is this Dekotora game? So Dekotora is when they have like these decorated trucks. And I guess there's a truck decorator simulator for 2750. <laughs> That's so cool. I didn't know this existed. Definitely one of the most Japan specific things I've ever seen. And if we go down here, it starts to get really interesting. This is still PlayStation 1. They've got R-Type S 5500. That is, is quite a lot, but it's really cool. Then they've got Choro Q. 
This is also out for the N64, I think. 3,300. Super cool little franchise. They've got Mega Man X5 for 1,100. Really, really cool. It's really nice to see their selection of, of games. What is this? Segare Giri? Okay. 2,200. What a specific... This is one of those wacky... Man, I miss this era of games so much. There's so many of these wacky little games for the PS2 that are just... I don't know. You really don't see that anymore. Then over here with the Obi Strip, we've got 3,300 for Street Fighter Zero. That's cool. That's dope. Then if we turn around, their GameCube selection is, is looking pretty cool. We've got Gift Pia over here and Wario World for the GameCube. I never hear that much about this game, but I really like it. I play it a lot. I have a, a modded GameCube that I guess you guys have seen by now. And this is one of the first games I tried on it. It's, it's, it's a really cool game. And for 1980, it's actually not a terrible price. Then look how cool, they've got the big e-reader plus version of uh, Animal Crossing for 3,300. And here's one you don't see a lot, Kururudin Squash. This is Kururudin for the Game Boy Advance, but I didn't know, apparently there's a GameCube version of it. That looks cool. I'm definitely gonna check this out when I get home. Then there's a uh, Kinikuman game for 880. Is this a wrestling game? I think it is. It's definitely a pro wrestling game for sure. It says Kizuari, that means there's scratches on a disc, but I never see this. This is really cool. Then, yeah, this is what I mean. Look at their GameCube selection. This is really not something you see every day. And I don't know, this hard off just is special. They have like a special selection of games that you usually don't find in the other hard offs. Then we've made it to the Super Famicom games. Yeah, look at Final Fantasy VI. That is a lot, 2750. This is, uh, I mean, it's a pristine condition. I get it, but it's it's really, really up there in the price. That is that is very premium compared to their Wonder Project J over here, which is just a thousand yen, which I think is a good price for this. I've seen this go for way more. And uh, I would have actually picked this up if we weren't like on the hunt for N64 games these days, right? Then we've got Tetris Battle for 880. That's actually a really good price for this game. It doesn't have the manual, but definitely a good price. Yeah, their prices are, it, sometimes it's high, sometimes it's low, but I think this is a really good price for this specific game. This is pretty interesting. It's 2,200, but I don't see this one in the box that often. This is Yoshi's Road Battle or whatever, like the one where you have the Super Scope and you fight games. I don't have a Super Scope, but apparently you can play this with the mouse, which is really cool because I don't really want to set up a Super Scope. Then we, we can't forget to go down here and dig into the Game Boy games. You've got Happy Panachu for the Game Boy Advance, always a fun find. And then next to these Yu-Gi-Oh! And, and Rave, whatever that is, you got F1 Race for the Game Boy. And Tetris for the Game Boy as well. I have all of these, so that's fine. But then 550 for the Tamagotchi game, also pretty cool. And here we go, Mario Tennis GB, a really fun game. Also one that I already have in my collection. And, and it, it wouldn't be a 4 a.m. video if we don't focus on some of these hamster games. Look at this, I've never seen this one. Hamster Paradise, this is Hamster Paradise for 550. They're all 550, these are pretty cool. Sometimes these are more, sometimes these are less. They've got Hamtaro. And Hamster Paradise 2, come on now. And then this Hamster Paradise, oh, this is Hamster Paradise 4, apparently. And then this Hamster Paradise is 330. It's a little beat up, but uh, yeah, also <laughs> constantly running into hamster games. Hi, Ramen. Then over here, next to all these uh, random peripherals, I found a Super Famicom Wii Classic controller. Now, I've been actively looking for one of these. I'll try to find one without the box. That would be cheaper but essentially what this is is you connect it to your Wiimote and it allows you to play like the Wii uh, Virtual Console Super Famicom games and Super Nintendo games and it's really cool because my Wii actually outputs component video into my uh, CRT so you would have like a really good way to emulate you know old games and it's just a really cool cheap and easy way to, to play games on a CRT if you have a modded Wii. That is, and look how cool these boxes is, man. Like, this is something that we never got into us. This is a Club Nintendo Japan exclusive for 2,000 yen. It's not bad, but you can find them in the junk bins as well. And then, for some reason, all the way in their glass section, they have the Adventures of Lolo 1 and 2 for the American NES. Look at that, 5,500. I guess that's a good price. 
3,300 for Lolo, and then Super Mario Brothers in the back for 4,400. Yeah, let's get that. Three American NES games. And then at the bottom, we have a 16,500 Sega Mark III. What a great console. It's so clean. I really like the look of it and how it takes the carts and stuff. I'm just not really a Sega guy, but at, at one point, I do want one of these just to mess around with it. ヒジョーヒミツ。教えようか。こんなニュースくてゲームができる。セガマイカード。新作続々。ピットフォール2。ドキドキペンギンランド。チョップリフター。スクープだ。ソフトがカードになった。セガマイカード。this is pretty cool. They've got this Pokemon card car game for the DS. I remember when this came out and it actually comes with these three starter cards. That's so cool. It, it says it's included for 5,500. If you're a fan of like, you know, DS games and Pokemon card, that's uh, really cool. Then next to it, look at Dragon Ball Fusions. Look how cool this is. This is completely gold. It's so shiny, 2750, man. There's a lot on the 3DS and, and, and DS that I just still have to get into. And look at this Final Fantasy Premium Package. It's by the PS2 games, but I think this is a PS1 game. It's Final Fantasy 1 and 2. And uh, yeah, look, this is for the PlayStation 1. And it's the Final Fantasy 1 and 2 Premium Package. This is so cool. I love oversized game things. I wonder what's inside it. I'm not too sure. I know the Final Fantasy. 7-1, but I don't know about this one. I'll look it up later. I'll put it on the screen, of course. You'll, you guys are gonna see what's in it. All right, nice little browse. I got my basket over there. Let's uh, let's go to the mighty junk section. I'm actually looking for pro wrestling games. Those are the ones that usually end up in this bin because they're just virtually worthless for what it's worth. But they're 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 worth a lot to me. So if I can score like a good virtual pro wrestling here for 100 yen, I'm definitely gonna scoop that up but it's always worth it to at least check right this is really cool the ps2 dvd controller this apparently works on the ps1 as well if you want to use it as like an audiophile music cd player because apparently the ps1 has like the best quality audio like ever i don't know why that's a thing but look how cool this is 550 i might consider this comes with the manual and everything Definitely works. It has the receiver here, and then you can just have a remote on your PS2. But I, I want the PS3 one, because that's kind of how I play my, my DVDs. This is kind of cool. All the way down here in the junkiest of the junk bin, I found a uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator for Windows 95 for 500 yen in the box. This might come home with me. This is so cool. Old school big box PC gaming software in uh, yeah in Japanese. This is amazing. I'm gonna see if it's all in there. Quick check and yeah, it's all there. Here's the uh, flight simulator manual, and the disc itself is clean enough that for 500 yen, this is great. This is such a cool find. The Windows 95 edition. I don't think I've ever played this especially in Japanese, but I do have a Windows 98 PC and this should work just fine. Look at that. Really excited about this. Let's go. Then over here, we found a whole bunch of Pokemon VHSs. Look at that. This is Pichu's Movie 2001. There's another one. I have no idea what these are. I guess these are shorts. I don't really think I'm gonna buy... Ah, this is Pikachu's Winter Vacation. Okay, I'm definitely getting this one. Because I have Pikachu's Summer Vacation. And now I have Pikachu's Winter Vacation. I'm um, definitely picking these up. Ah, you know what, for 100 yen, I might pick them all up. Really great find all the way in this uh, junk bin. Oh, here's another one. Pikachu's Winter Vacation 2000. I guess there's different ones. Cool, I guess I have like five of these right now. But yeah, definitely coming home with me. All right, we're definitely starting to put on weight if we look at uh, the stuff that I have right now. Let's go to the next store because we don't want to miss all the other stuff. It's all, this is always worth it to come here for sure, for sure. Man, on my way out, I saw their glass section and it looks 
really good. They've got almost all the Pokemon games. They've got Zelda Oracle of Seasons. They've got Pokemon for the GBA. Dragon Ball for the GBA. Minish Cap. And they've got these Princess Card Captor Sakura, whatever that is. Wow, really, really cool. Man, it's always a double feeling when it's so successful so early in the day because now I'm off to my second hard off, but I got this whole bag full of heavy stuff that I gotta carry with me for the rest of the day right now, so you know. But we're on foot, it is what it is, right? It's part of the game. So, Chorincan is a really great place. It's super quiet, it's nice, and there's usually a couple of places that are always worth checking out, whether you take another train and go a bit further in or not. I definitely highly recommend checking this place out. It's another one of those places that's like an hour away by train if you're staying in Tokyo, and it's, it's just always worth it, right? All right, so let's uh, see what the next hard off has to offer. Eh? Well, with the sun in my eyes, we made it. Hard off number two. Let's uh, get inside and see what they have. Well, this is interesting. It's huge. It's a combination of like hobby off, off house, and good old hard off. Look at this. Okay, I usually don't look at plushies, but some of these are crazy. Eight thousand, eight. 100 for this, I guess it's a limited edition. I don't know, they've got some cards in here to 20,000 for this Pikachu cards. Man, I, I'm just out of the card game at this point. Okay, I keep getting distracted, but look at all these, I think Pride or UFC action figures. I didn't know these existed. I don't know a lot of these guys, but I do know this guy. They got Brock Lesnar. Man, I'm, I'm seriously getting lost on the way to the game section. Look how big this is. This is amazing. Look at this, they got the initial D racing set. It's like a remote control car. It's 3,000 yen, I want this. I'll never be able to get this in the house. But it's, it's, I mean, you can, I, mean, you can I, I don't know, it drifts, bro. Look, it drifts. I, I think it just looks like it drifts. Man. Okay, now, now I'm really into it. I see it in the back there. There's a junk corner. Let's let's see if we can find our way over there in this massive warehouse of hard off. This is definitely 100% our newest candidate for the biggest hard off that I've ever been in. This place is massive and I'm, I'm seriously just, it's taking time to get to the games. It's that big. Um, I think I found it. So let's find out what they have. But yeah, there's just stuff everywhere again getting distracted but it's it's a long vacation this is such a really cool h otaki this is a, a japanese city pop album with hiroshi nagai's uh painting over there i i love this kind of stuff I, I i don't know it's not retro game related so i don't really talk about it on the channel but look at this this is amazing it's such a cool album and for a thousand yen but i, I promise myself unless i upgrade my space situation i just won't touch vinyl because it's I don't have the space for it. I got like 200 records back in a different country that I still need to find a way to get over to Japan. <laughs> Look at this, it's just all there, it's so cool. Okay, we found it. We're, we're in the junk section. We haven't even found the regular video game section, but somehow we're, we're in the back of the uh, junk section, which is literally has, what is this, 50s era voltometer, what, <laughs> yo. Okay, this is gonna be this is gonna be fun. Let's go. Yo, this is cool. Hidden in all of this stuff, we've got the Nintendo branded tape player. This was used for the Family Basic computer for the Famicom, and uh, seven thousand nine eighty. I guess that's what it worth. But that's yeah, that's you 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 just write programs to cassettes using this. That's cool to find all the way in the back here, like dug underneath these random electronics. This is kind of cool. We're in the junk section. And uh, over here, Prime Goal and Mario Paint, if only for these cases. These are really cool cases. I've never seen these before. TV game case cassettes. That's dope. Then on top of these PSVRs, look at that uh, disk system chilling. 5,500, not working, so you gotta replace the band, but I guess not, not bad at all. This is interesting. This is a PS1 box 
for 110 yen. I'm tempted. I actually don't even have a PS1. But if you're looking for a box to complete your collection, which is literally free, almost, 110 yen. That's like, what, 60 cents? Okay, this, this junk section is definitely way too big. And uh, I'm gonna be spending the rest of my day here, apparently. Let's go find the regular game section. And then take it from there. I think I'm here. Yeah, I think I'm here. All right, let's let's keep going. Yeah, definitely. Look at this. This is all video games. Got DS, Wii U, PS4, PS3, PS2, PS Vita, PSP, and then over here, Famicom, Super Famicom, Game Boy, Game Boy Color, Game Boy Advanced, PlayStation One, and we just gotta we just gotta take it. Little by little, I guess. Look at this. They got everything. I definitely think we're gonna find something here today. Oh, this is cool. Apparently, they also have PC games. And look at this. 550 for a big box Diablo 2. Oh, man. I don't even care if it's all in there. This is definitely going with me. Look at this. This is amazing. Man, I'm dead 100%, man. Come on now. Man, what a day. And then for some reason, they have Diablo 3 here, which is 15,400 yen. I think this might... No, it's not even sealed. Why is this so expensive? And then they've got Diablo 3 here for 38.50. What? I don't get it. Why is this so expensive? All of the Sims games over here. Really cool, but I got my score of the day, man. Come on. Come on, son. Then for 550 over here, they've got the Final Fantasy VII International. Haven't seen this for 550 in a while. So yeah, that one's gonna come with me too. It, it, it was a thousand yen usually, but here it's 500 yen. So yeah, that's gonna come with me. Then there's this Final Fantasy bundle for 660. That's pretty cool. This one is Final Fantasy, I think Final Fantasy five. Yeah, so five and six and, and it's not all there. So I'm gonna leave this one here. But yeah, really cool to find that over here. Let's keep on going. And here they've got a bit of a razzle dazzle of Game Boy games. What is this Kirby's, what is this Kirby two for 2200? I forgot that this was a hamster-centric Kirby. They have Finding Nemo for 550. Harry Potter for 550. I would have actually picked these up if uh, it was any other day. I'm just carrying too much stuff, so I got a cherry pick at this point. And of course, we got to go look at the N64 games. They got Diddy Kong Racing for 550, but we already have that one. Then they've got this Shogi game for 300 yen. Kiwame for 800. Yeah, all games that we either already have or too much. Dance Dance Revolution for 1,100. That one's okay. Yoshi Story over here for 880. This one's also pretty cool, but we already have this. I gotta make a list at some point because I, I don't know if I can remember all of it. And the Jinsei game, the Game of Life 64. I definitely want this, but not for 2,200. So yeah, let's keep on going. And over here for the Super Nintendo section, they've got Theme Park. Did not know they made this for the Super Nintendo. I guess it's like a bootleg roller coaster tycoon. It's from Electronic Arts. I know there's a PC version of Theme Park. I know, I know what it is, but I never knew it was for the Super Famicom of all consoles. That's really cool. Then some more Super Famicom goodness. We've got Star Fox over here, 2200. Yep, seems to be the average price. Super Wagyan Land, or sorry, Wagyan Paradise, 1100. Not bad. It's great. It's just, you know, there's only so much I can take with me in one day, I already have a full backpack. Pretty cool to find the collector's edition, or whatever you want to call it, of Gran Turismo 4. It's got information on literally all of the cars in the game. 
And did you know this game runs at 1080i? So if you've got like a retro tank or anything to upscale your system, this game will like convert that into 1080p. Like you would have like a full HD like type game. It's, it's really cool for the PlayStation 2. I think this is one of the only games that does that. So here we've got the Wii and the Wii U. This, <laughs> I remember Skylanders. Good Lord, they got a whole thing over here. But uh, what's you guys' uh, favorite Wii game? SpongeBob SquarePants here sticks out. Uh, I want to know. Put it in the comments. I, I I'm pretty new to the Wii. I skipped that whole generation of games, and I'm definitely exploring it now. And I would love to know what you guys' favorite Wii games. I guess Wii U counts as well, but a lot of those are Switch games now. So, you know, this is definitely cool. A Pokemon Silver box is a little beat up. But with the Pokewalker for 3,300, I have this game, so I'm gonna leave this here. But this is an amazing price, and uh, yeah, definitely, definitely, 100%. Uh, a good sign of the times, man. Prices are going down, and it, it's looking good. I, I love to see it. It's also because we're so far away from Tokyo, but great sign of the times. And look at all these game cubes. Really cool to see them all lined up. 7,000, 8,000. That's not bad at all and, and their n64s above that is uh yeah it's looking good 8000 is a bit much for an n64 but with the gold controller and the expansion pack that's definitely not terrible and here's a uh, inbox gamecube for 9000 yen yeah that's great really really cool i'm having a great time i hope i can film enough for this place for, and the video won't be too long because it, it's crazy. This, this place just keeps on going. So again, with my own little Wii set up, I, I found a Wii Fit Plus for 1650. I'm definitely taking this one with me. It's heavy. I didn't know balance boards were this heavy. Let me let me try to take this out of the thing here. But yeah, look at that Wii Fit Plus. This is my last stop of the day, and for 1650. It's definitely worth it to get this. I'm gonna try this. I got the Wii set up in the living room and, and I wanna do this. I wanna do the Wii Fit thing. So uh, yeah, definitely looking forward to this. Then over here in the depths of uh, this place for 550, I found a Famicom. This might be a project Famicom for the future 550. Uh, yeah, this is beat up enough to the point where I wanna try fixing this up definitely coming with me today man i gotta carry a lot now let's uh let's wrap this video up and you know what time it is it's time to tally up our n64 games in case you're new to the channel we're going for a complete collection and the n64 has 206 games that is japanese games of course then we've added three games to our collection today making the total 21 games collected so far that means we have 185 games left to go and while I don't collect every boxed PC game, I do like to take the ones that I either grow up with or are interesting to me. And they really add a nice addition on the top of the shelf, bringing the whole thing together. And yeah, this, this just really makes me feel all warm and fuzzy inside. All right. All right, well, the sun is setting and um yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. What a great haul. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. I'm definitely going to be coming back here multiple times a year. It's absolutely worth it. And thank you guys so much for watching. I'm going to go lug all of this stuff home now to see if it fits in my tiny Tokyo apartment. Thank you guys so much for watching. Have a good day. And uh, see you guys in the next one. Peace.